Have you ever wondered or are you struggling with how to make animal eyes in your paintings look lifelike? Well, today we're diving into one of the most powerful features of animal portraits, the eyes. Now, whether it's the fierce gaze of an eagle or the gentle stare of a pet, animal eyes carry so much emotion and capturing that can make any painting come alive. Now, I'll use an eagle's eye as our example today, but everything I'm about to share can be applied to any animal eyes, whether you're painting a wild fox or a wise old owl, or even your own furry friend. Let's break down the steps together so you can feel more confident diving into those details. Now, by the end of the video, you should have a better understanding on how to achieve some form of realism, depending on your goal of your painting and the style that you wish to paint in. All right, let's talk about brushes. Now for the intricate work in the eyes, smaller is usually better. I like using a fine liner brush for small dots and tiny lines. And I often use nail brushes as they are really tiny and meant for itty bitty details on nails. And actually they work really well for me. Well, here I am mixing my first color that I'm going to use in the yellow part of the eye to start adding some detail by using small dots and tiny lines. As you've probably noticed, I'm not using one of those small nail detail brushes right now, but a short liner brush, as I didn't want super crisp strokes quite yet. I just wanted to lay down a base that I can work with later on. So it's okay not to go in hyper detailed immediately. And I will be using one of those nail brushes later on in this video. Another brush I would recommend is a small round brush for controlled strokes. Depending on how big the eyes are and what size canvas you use. And obviously if you have a small, super small round brush size. Now in my case, I'm working on a 9 by 12 inch canvas. So I don't really use those for small details. However, I do use a soft round brush for glazing though. So keep that in mind. But the round brush really is super versatile. You can also use a tiny filbert brush for a super smooth blending. Now, all in all, just choose brushes that just feel natural to you. This is all about getting comfortable with your tools. Experiment and just see what works best. I know that I started this video off with the block in of the eye already in place. I do have a video that shows the block in phase of this eye, but the video itself does not go into how I did it. Now, you're more than welcome to watch it, put the video on mute if you're not interested in the content, and just learn by observing what I do. Now, if you'd really like a breakdown of that process, leave me a comment and I'll happily make a tutorial for you. You can find the link to the video in the description. When it comes to painting realistic animals, the eyes are one of the most crucial features to get right. Not only do they add a sense of emotion and soul, but they can also sort of make or break the entire piece. But no pressure or and fear not. That's why I'm making this video to hopefully give you some tips and tricks that you can work with and help you in your realistic painting journey. The challenges that we face when trying to paint realistic animal eyes can add up if you have no idea where to start or what to do. Now, one of the biggest hurdles is getting the color just right. From the bright piercing yellow of a wolf's gaze to the soft gentle brown of a deer's eye well animal eyes come in a huge range of hues and shades think about cats their eyes can range in color from ginger to blues and greens and then there's the challenge of capturing the sparkle of light in the iris which is often referred to as the catch light and that one can be a little tricky to achieve So let's talk about colors. Even though we might see a single color at first, there's usually a lot more going on in those layers. While the specific colors will vary depending on the animal, a general palette of browns, yellows, and blacks is a great starting point. Now for an eagle, try using a rich golden yellow or burnt sienna as your base color. Then you can add shadows with dark browns and your highlights with softer yellows. Now, I started with a simple block in of a uh, black and a light yellow. Well, not every artist is going to agree with me on the use of black here. Some believe it is never a good idea to use any black. 
as it might just leave a feeling of a black hole, an infinite abyss, so to say. Many do believe that it's too opaque and leaves your painting looking flat. Now, I do think it's personal and it's your choice in what you do. And if your reference photo clearly showcases black, go ahead, put that on your canvas. And if you're not sure, start with a paints gray or burnt umber. You can easily adjust those colors later on by glazing over top of it to get to the color you want and the style that you're going for. Well, I'm of the belief that you just do what feels right to you and sometimes just bend the rules and see how it turns out. Because if you don't like the results, then you just know for next time and you've learned something. Now, I did go in with black and I don't regret it at all. For other animal eyes, you might want to use different color palettes. For cats, you might want to add some shades of blues and greens. And for dogs, I'd stay closer to browns. When you're mixing colors, think subtle and natural. Instead of grabbing the brightest, boldest colors, go for softer, earthy tones, something that feels like real fur or feathers. It gives the whole piece just a more natural vibe. What I've learned is to use the first color that I've mixed in with my next color choice. So if I mixed a brown and black and white together, I use what is left of that color and mix it in with my next color. So this way you create color harmony. This way, all your colors will complement each other and are like a little family. So once you've mixed your second color, you can use some of that color and mix it into your next third color. Now, if you pay close attention to my palette in the corner of the screen, you'll see me doing this quite often in my color mixing. Now, this works really well for a realistic look, but if you're into bolder colors and bigger contrasts, then by all means, go to town with different colors and create your own color palette and just have fun in the process. It's all about learning and developing. And you know what? You might end up not liking realism and that's okay too. Now here you see me working on the lid and the space around the eye. Now I'm putting some shadows in place to make it look less flat and give it more depth. I'm still working with the first color that I've mixed. I try to work with one color as long as I can before it dries up and I put it everywhere I see fit. Well, with that said, I do add some shadows in around the beak and the feathers that I have edited out of this video just for time's sake. So if you see little jumps in how my painting looks, that is why. Now, crucial to any realistic looking painting is layering. Now, obviously my first layer was already on the canvas, but here's my rule of thumb. Work from the background to the foreground. And when you block in, keep it really simple. It's about a foundation of colors and shapes, and that's it. And from this base, you can go on building multiple layers by adding details and glazes. By building up layers of color, you're gonna create a depth that cannot really be achieved with a single flat coat. Now, I also tend to work from dark to light. Many other artists do as well, but figure out what works best for you. It's not like the law and you can do your own thing, but I find that this technique works well for my realistic looking desires. Gradually add lighter shades on top of your base, using a small brush of your choice to create subtle lines, dots, shapes. Now with an eagle, you might notice the eyes are really intense, like almost piercing. So using strong contrasts between light and dark shades can really bring that look home. There's no real blending of the pupil into the other part of the eye. It's actually a really strong contrast. Now for dogs and cats, you might want to blend out your pupil to create a more gradual change between pupil and eye color. And this can be achieved by using lighter shades around the pupil or pulling some of the darker shades just gently outside of the pupil shape. Dry brushing can be applied as a technique, as well as wet on wet blending. Did you notice that I've only used one brush and one color so far? It's really amazing what you can achieve with very little. It doesn't need to be super complicated. I believe that the complication occurs in our brains, yet the application is fairly simple. So I hope you can take a deep breath now and just relax. Realism isn't all that hard. 
the way I look at, let's say, the eyes is really more in a way of dissecting shapes and values. I don't just see an eye. I see dots, lines, different colors. I see highlights. I see shadows. And that is what I try to translate to my canvas. And hey, I'm no expert. I still have tons of things to learn. And I'm sure my techniques will change over time. But for the moment, this is what works for me and how I achieve my finished paintings. Now here I change over to one of those detailed nail brushes that I mentioned earlier. I really love working with these as they allow me to get really tiny with my brush strokes. I have about four or five with different length bristles and a little bit of width difference. And here I am also mixing a different color as I'm going in for an other layer within the eye to create more depth and realism by adding little dots and tiny lines. It takes a little bit to mix the color because the brush is so small. So a little tip, use a different, bigger brush to do your mixing. It'll go a lot faster. But the downside of that is that you're going to have an extra brush or brushes to clean. So, but it's totally up to you. You're going to see me dab my finger on the canvas a lot. Now, why do I do that? Sometimes I come in way too fierce with my brush and I end up with paint that's just too concentrated in one spot or whatever I put on there just didn't look quite right. And it's a quick and easy way to diffuse the paint a little and take some of the harshness out of a stroke. I can do this with my bare fingers as I'm working with acrylics. Now, if you're working with oils, this is not recommended as oil paints can contain toxic ingredients. There are toxic free products out there, but I've never painted with oils. So I do not know what to tell you here or what product to suggest. Now, if you're an oil painter, feel free to throw that in a comment for other artists who have oil as their medium. I know a lot of oil painters wear gloves to protect their hands and fingers, but I am not sure if it's a good idea to use the glove for dabbing like I do here because you might end up with the texture pattern of the fabric of the glove on your painting. But yet again, I don't know much about oil painting. So for those of you who do paint with oil, time to speak up in the comments, please. I've switched back to the liner brush that I started this painting session with and I'm attempting to get my next color mixed up here. Well, color mixing can be a challenge to say the least and you're going to watch me struggle here a little to get a color that I'm satisfied with. I don't have a good basic understanding of color theory and it shows. Yep, I guess I'm showing my true colors, pun intended, <laughs> but this brown mixture wasn't what I wanted so I decided to add some black to it. Well. That was a bit of a mistake and it drowned out the brown completely and saturated it really quick. Now I realized that pretty quickly. So I grabbed some color back from the first mixture to try and desaturate it. Darn black. <laughs> Here it actually comes to bite me in the back now, doesn't it? So I had a little of primary yellow and that seems to do the trick here. Now I'm adding a little bit more water to make it into a glaze. And then I'm going to be ready to go back into my painting. Well, that brings me to another crucial technique, glazing, which involves using thin, transparent layers of paint to create subtle shifts in color and tone. This is especially useful for capturing that soft, luminous sheen of an animal's gaze. Now you create a glaze by adding water to the color that you want to use until it's almost a watercolor type consistency. You can use any color for this, a pre-mixed color that's already on your palette or water down a color just straight from the tube. It really depends on what you're trying to achieve. Now do pay attention to the temperature of color that you want to achieve. A warmer color might require a glaze made 
from Burnt Sienna. And if you're after a cooler tone, you can use Payne's Gray or Thalo Blue. Play around with it. If your glaze isn't quite giving you the results you want it, you can easily paint over it without affecting the layers you already put down. However, big warning here, wait until your surface is dry to add any glaze. Otherwise, you'll risk painting off what you put down due to the amount of water that's in the glaze. So once again, do not start glazing until the area you want to cover is bone dry. Now it's time for highlights. Now this step is key because it captures the soul of the eye. Adding highlights is just one of my favorite moments and it's like a magical moment in painting the eyes. It's like watching the whole painting come alive and in all essence, watching your animal come to life. Now do remember that realistic eyes don't need to be overloaded with detail. Instead, focus on capturing soft rounded shapes and gentle curves. A highlight on one side of the iris tends to do the trick by adding that subtle sparkle of light. Now, for an eagle's eye, placing the highlight off to one side emphasizes that wild, intense gaze. You can see that I've already hinted in my block-in where that catch light needs to go. Now, it's a very faint, hazy, or maybe grayish area, just off to the left side of the pupil. If you watch me mix the colors for this part, you might have noticed that I used my little trick of mixing an already pre-mixed color that I used earlier in the painting in with a different color to create that color harmony. Here I'll show you what I mean by that. I just added some titanium white in with the previously mixed beige slash creamy color to create the color that I want. I make sure I have enough water added to get the right consistency. Now I set myself up for the finalizing of the catch light and you see me touching up that area right now, but it won't be finished in this painting session. I have to be honest with you, this painting was put on the back burner for my Remembrance Day painting and I kept it on my art table, but I forgot to turn it away from me. An artist on YouTube advised me once to turn paintings around if you're not working on it, which I forgot. And what happens for me is that I see it sitting there every single day, unfinished, and I look at it daily as I go by and it sort of becomes a problem for me. I now have seen it way too many times and I get some sort of analysis paralysis. I see what needs to be done, I understand it's not finished, and I try to figure out in my head what my next steps will need to be. But in the process, I overthink this and it starts to become overwhelming and I actually lose my motivation to finish it. So the painting is now turned around so I can look at it with fresh eyes in a little while and finish the piece. Painting realistic eyes can feel like a big task, but it's really about building up layers, observing colors and just being gentle with those details. I hope this breakdown leaves you feeling inspired to give it a try. Remember, each eye that you paint will be unique and might feel a bit different each time. and That's part of the journey. So practice and be patient with yourself. You got this. Now, every artist starts somewhere. So don't be discouraged if your first attempts don't turn out the way you hoped. Keep practicing and experiment with different techniques. And most importantly, have fun. If you want to dive a bit deeper, consider watching the two videos that just popped up on your screen. One covers a jaguar's eye and the other dog eyes. So go check those out. Thanks so much for joining me. Stay happy, keep your peace, and God bless you. Bye-bye.